the aim one of the aims of the holy spirit is to make us look more and more like jesus christ by the day the bible tells us in genesis god says let us make man in our image therefore we are made in the image of god but we need to become aware of that and begin and allow the holy spirit to help us step into that reality so although we are made in the image of god if we have a distorted understanding of our identity for example we think that i'm a woman but i really am a man i'm a man i was born a man but really i'm a woman or a distorted understanding that you know i i will always have this depression or i will always have or I've, I've always been a fearful person or i've always had this anxiety now that's been with me from as far as i can remember and we have this distorted of the understanding of who we really are what we're doing in essence we're allowing the enemy to come in and distort our understanding of reality there is only one reality and his name is jesus christ there is only one truth his name is jesus christ everything other than that might be a fact so it might be a fact that the doctor's giving me bad diagnosis but it the fact doesn't mean truth because the truth is by his stripes you have been healed you see let's not confuse fact with reality okay don't let the enemy come in and start to distort your understanding of who you really are because who you really are is you are made in the image of god who you really are is kings and queens of the most high god okay the bible tells us that we are a royal priesthood so we are kings and priests we are we are kings and queens we are priests we are a priesthood if we are sons and daughters of the king that makes us royalty okay we have to understand that we are made in the image of god what is the image of god hmm. the image of god is pure the image of God is holy. The image of God is power and authority. The image of God is sanctification. The image of God is love and joy and peace and goodness and kindness and gentleness and patience and self-control. These are all found in Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 through 23. The image of God is about healing. The image of God is about freedom. The image of God is humility, surrender, modesty, humble. The image of God is light, purity, perfect. Be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect says the word of God for you are perfectly and wonderfully made says the word of God the opposite of that would be the distortion sometimes it doesn't even have to be the complete opposite sometimes it can be just a twisted truth you know the devil knows how to twist things to make it look like truth but it's not to make it look like light but it's darkness. Woe to those who could good who call good evil and evil good, who call darkness light and light darkness, who call bitter sweet and sweet bitter, twists and lies. But let's say the opposite of that, just for the sake of this video, would be pride, hate, coveting, impure thoughts, selfish appetites. A false identity that is not the image of God because the Bible tells us you are made in the image of God we are false identity that I am this sick person that's who I'm going to be I've always had this arthritis I will have it to the day I die no that's false identity I was born a boy but I, I identify as a woman no that's false identity I was born a girl, but I identify as a cat. Oh, that's false identity. Um, I was born a girl, but I, 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 I identify as um, 
President Donald Trump. No. It doesn't matter what you identify as. That's a false identity. You can identify as anything you like, but it doesn't mean that's what you are. What you are is what you were born. What you are is God. What was what God made you. I can identify as a bottle of water. It doesn't mean I'm a bottle of water. I can identify as my dog who's sleeping on the floor. That's the one you hear snoring sometimes on the background. It doesn't mean I'm a dog. It doesn't mean I'm a cat. It doesn't mean I'm an elephant. You know, these are false identities. Another false identity is an anorexic person who looks in the mirror and thinks they're so fat. You know, another false identity is someone who's obese and says, yeah, got this nice silhouette, you know, and they're obese, very unhealthy, bad health issues. False identities causing you to believe you're something that you're not, causing you to believe you're somebody that you're not, you know. Um, this pride, this uh, ego superiority, this selfishness, this uh, coveting, this uh, lying and stealing and just everything that is not the image of God. You are perfectly and wonderfully made in the image of God. We have to, you say, well, if I'm perfectly and wonderfully made, then how is it that I'm still living in sin? Mm, good question. The only one, you have no power by yourself to get out of sin, to stop sinning. All right? Because you're living in the fleshy nature. And the Bible says the flesh. It's not talking about a body. It's talking about the sinful nature of man. Okay? So we have the seed of corruption in us. Right? When Adam and Eve sinned back in the day, in the Garden of Eden... The sin, they entered into a fallen state, fallen state of man, corruption, wickedness, all right? So everyone that comes from their seed, which is the whole world, came from Adam and Eve, is coming from the seed of sin, from the seed of corruption. You say, well, how can I be coming from the seed of corruption if I'm made in God's image? We are made in God's image, but we have that seed of corruption. So this can be pure water, okay? But I... I put a cockroach in there. Uh, maybe this is a bad example, but anyway, it's the best one I can think of. And I put a cockroach in there. So this is pure water, but I put that cockroach in there, which defiles it. And I take the cockroach and I cleanse that water through a purification process, purify, purifying machines. It becomes in the image of God. It's the same with God. You are made in the image of God, but you've got that sin in you. And the only one that can take, help you, give you the power through your free will to stop that sin is Jesus Christ. You can't do it by yourself, otherwise you would have. This is why Jesus Christ comes in. He cleanses you of all your sins. That's the cleansing process. He cleanses you of all, all your sins. And you remain the pure image of God that you were originally. Okay, but Jesus Christ needs to come in and cleanse you of that. There is no other way without Jesus Christ. If you could have done it, you would have but done it by now. If you could have stopped those drugs, you would have done it by now. If you could have stopped that fornication, you would have done it by now. Right? You say, yeah, but I stopped the drugs and I didn't know Jesus. Yeah, you stopped the drugs, heroin, let's say, but you went from heroin to cocaine. What you did is you went from one addiction to the next and you haven't stopped anything really, have you? You know? Yeah, but I stopped that fornication with the neighbor down the road. Yeah, but then you, you started fornicating with the neighbor down the other side of the road, see? Because only Jesus can help you come in and cleanse you of those things. So we really need to turn to Jesus Christ. For those who have just rejected Jesus, you need to let Jesus into your life. That's the only way to go about it. Trust me, being there, done that. I'm sitting here speaking confidently from experience. For those of you who have already accepted Jesus Christ and are living the lukewarm life, one foot in the kingdom, one foot in the world, Jesus says, Lord, I know your works. You're neither not hot or cold. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. In other words, your lifestyle is so distasteful to me. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth, right? Jesus doesn't like lukewarm business. If you've already come to Christ and have been filled with the Holy Spirit, you need to allow the Holy Spirit to start working in you. Everything that is not of God, surrender it to him. Give it to him. You might have been walking with Christ for 10 years and you've been faithful, 
and you've been so obedient and you've been doing everything right and then somewhere you know a season a time of weakness you accidentally give the devil a foothold and he comes in and he starts to plant ungodly thoughts in your mind maybe of fornication maybe of uh, jealousy maybe of uh, revenge maybe of living a bit worldly no one will know all right you've given him a foothold and although you've been walking all right all this time suddenly you start seeing that you're becoming a bit lukewarm you're straying a bit you know turn to the holy spirit and say help me show me what door i've opened and this evil came in and so i can close the door and give me strength don't let me fall give me strength help me change i want to do things right by you i don't want to grieve the spirit of god i want to walk like jesus i want to be in the image of jesus this is no time for guilt and shame and uh, condemn condemnation it's no time to start hiding your thoughts it's no time to say oh, i can do it a bit secretly i can be with jesus because i love him and everything but i can walk a little bit in the world you know there's we can't be doing things like that because uh, what you're doing is you're, you're you're playing with demons that's what that is you're playing with darkness what you're doing is you're compromising with demons you're tolerating demons listen we're not here to tolerate demons we're here to cast those demons out we're not here to compromise we're not here to tolerate we're not here to be lukewarm we're not here to play games we're not here to sit down and have a cup of tea with the demon and pat them on the shoulder and say oh, okay you know you know you can you can uh, hang around for no out in the name of jesus right we need to look jesus says if your right eye causes you to sin pluck it out and throw it away from you for it is better for one of your members to perish than for your whole body to be thrown into fire if your right hand causes you to sin cut it off and throw it far away from you for it is better for one of your members to perish than your whole body to be cast into hell fire what's jesus saying is jesus telling me to take my eye out is jesus telling me to cut off my hand what jesus is saying is be extreme with your sin if your right eye causes you to sin do what you need to do be extreme to throw it away from you as far as it can be if your hand causes you to sin do what you need to do be extreme whatever it takes to throw that away from you notice the distance he didn't say just cut it off he says throw it away from you there's a distance the thing that caused me to sin is all the way over there now there's a distance between us you're not i'm not near it anymore it's not near me anymore there's no proximity anymore proximity is very important you know for example the bible was telling us that there were sick people and demon possessed who knew that peter was going to pass so they put all the sick people and the demon possessed down on the side of the road so that only when peter passes just his shadow can fall upon them and they and they were all healed and all the demons left them proximity the shadow so it's proximity proximity is very important right when people needed to be healed and delivered in the bible where did they go they went to the church they went to the apostles of jesus that's the church they went to apostle paul that's the church they went to peter that's the church the church is the body of christ it's the assembly it's the body of christ they went to the church church needs to be a place of healing deliverance freedom right they went to the church there's power in proximity now let me get back to the story there's power in proximity you see on the good side there's power in proximity being uh, uh, near the being near the church being near anoint uh, where the anointing is flowing right but on the opposite side the negative side again there's harm in proximity so if the scene is right there proximity to you it's different to it being down there right if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out, throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it far from you. 
So away from you, far from you. There's no more proximity. Don't leave it near you. Don't say, well, it's just there in my heart, but sh nobody knows. Or it's um, maybe you're working in an office and in the next door office, there's someone that you're lusting over and you know that they're lusting over you. And there's just, there's just this, this, there's this seduction going on. There's this uh, lust going on. You think it's going to stop there. Mm -mm. All right. And you think, yeah, but it's just next door. It's not even in the same office. Proximity. Proximity. Jesus says, throw it far away from you. Be extreme to the point where it's so far away from you. You need to get out of that office. You need to get out of that neighborhood. You need to get out of that job, right? Extreme. You think, yeah, but if I give up this job, then how will I pay the bills? And Extreme. You think God's not going to provide for you when you're walking rightly by him. But let me tell you this. If you go against God, and you stay in that office where you know sin is taking place and more sin is lurking just around the corner just so you can pay your bills. I promise you there will come a time not only will you fall deeper into sin, but that job won't be available for, more, for, for you anymore. There will come a way for you to lose it and you will have more trouble than what you initially thought you would have had if you left that job. Jesus said, throw it away from you, cut it off pluck it out and throw it away from you he's saying be extreme when it comes to sin because sin is no game right let the holy spirit in let the holy spirit change you there is no place there is no space to start compromising with sin to start tolerating sin whatever that sin shows up as in your life it could be lust seduction drugs jealousy poor oh, jealousy is another one that's a dangerous one to be playing with you need to pluck it out you need to cut it off and throw it far away from you where you see jealousy listen just start running just start running the opposite direction and don't stop until you're able to look back and you can't see it anywhere in your sight you need to get out of there right serious stuff so however sin shows up for you, cut it off. But don't think that you're this superman or superwoman where you just start, start cutting things out of your life and no, it's not like that. You cut things out of your life. The Holy Spirit helps you cut things out of your life. The sword, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Right? Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Okay, you need to build this intimate, passionate uh, romance, intimacy, love relationship with God, and God will lead you every step of the way. Do not lean on your own understanding, but in all of your ways, submit to Him, and He will direct your path now. I think I've said enough. With that being said, there are many links below. God bless you.